It's been almost a year since I did my last video on RPCS3. In today's video we're going to download the latest version of it, we're going to install the firmware and we're going to try some gameplay using the M4 Mac Mini, the base version with 16GB of RAM. So stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is go on the official website. You will have a link in the description for everything you need. And just download the ARM version, because I have an ARM version for me. And then go to the PS3 system and then simply just scroll down until you see how to reinstall PS3 system software. Click on this one. For me, it takes a little because I'm on, I'm on beta software. And then download the PS3 update. And how you can see, they're both updated here. Now, the reason why you see multiple downloads is because I failed to record. Well, I was talking, but there was no microphone, so I have to redo it. So simply just double click on it. It will extract everything. And now just put the PS3 update into this one. Now, when you double click on this one, we will have a small problem because macOS is saying that, oh, you can't verify, so there's no way I can open it. You click done, go into settings, scroll down to privacy and security, scroll down here and click how you can see was blocked, open anyway, open anyway, and just put your password here and it will open. Now, once it's open, for me, it's already found the game because it's in the thing. But once it's open, all you have to do is go into files, go into firm or not firmware, sorry, install firmware and just put on this one and click install or open, double click on it or click open. And for me, it's already installed, but you just do it like this and then you will install the software. It will take like 10 seconds and that's it. Now, to connect an Xbox controller, for example, you just connect it via Bluetooth on the Mac, go into pads here, and if you scroll down on this one to SDL, you will have Xbox Game Pads. If it doesn't appear, just refresh, and then it will appear here. You have different controllers, PS1, DualShock 3 and 4, so PS3 and 4, DualSense. You can use those ones. I do have an Xbox One controller, so I'm going to use this one. Now, I will try, the first game that I will try is Dead or Alive 5. Now, the reason why I'm trying this one is this one. So on emulation, there are some games that you can emulate very easily, but there are some games that even though they're not, they're not as powerful, the emulation is really hard on them. Dead or Alive is, is one of those games that the, the, oh my God, the, the graphics is, they're not the best, but it does has some uh, problem emulating. So this is, is, is one of those games that you can try to see how good actually works. So we're going to choose here, I don't know, Ninja versus uh, I don't know, uh, this guy. And we're going to choose a stage, I don't know, should we choose Palace? Let's go. And now you can see down here, it says combining shaders. So when you see combining shaders, you have to wait. On the top here, you will have uh, frames per second. So this is how you can see the frames per second. And at the moment, it sounds pretty good. Let's add, uh, let's make the arrow six. So it will attack. And how you can see the performance is pretty decent. You know, you, you can, you can notice some lags and especially when it combining shaders appear, but the game is playable. And I'm just pressing buttons like an idiot here. I have no idea what I'm doing. But yeah, the game is super playable. How you can see there, we literally drop like from like 50 to like 30 FPS. And here, for example, dropping even more. So I am expecting the more we get from this wall and we're going to like outside here, I'm going to try to push him on this side. But yeah, it, at the end of the day, the game will be playable, right? Yeah, maybe we'll have some, uh, some moments where the game will lag a little bit. What happened? Okay. But the game is playable. You don't have any problem. Now, let's try a different game. To exit the game, just simply close the app. Now, to add another game, for example, you click Files, you click Boot. And here in Games, for example, I have God of War. I click Open. And that's it. Now, keep in mind, if you have, for example, an ISO game, you have to copy the, the uh, files from the ISO into a folder called 
whatever you want to call it. When you copy it, then it will work, but it, you cannot open an ISO file. Just now, unfortunately, with God of War, my entire system just crashed. And what I'm saying, the entire system, I really mean it, the entire system. My mouse didn't work, my keyboard didn't work. I was having like sound from the game, but that was it. I couldn't do any single thing. I had to force reset my Mac Mini. And it's unfortunate, but you will get things like this in, you know, when you're doing emulation. And how you can see here, this is the aftermath after I try to play God of War. Uh, Windows Server is quickly quit. With your permission to diagnose, send this to Apple, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, some games will work, some games won't. I hope you understand this. Running the software is the beta, so you will have problems with it. Not all the game will work, but yeah. I hope you do like this video. I hope it gives you an idea of where macOS ARM emulation right now is. And I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.